All right, guys. So we're back for part two of this build, Club Car DS, converting it from electric to gas, changing some things around. To be honest, when I started this the other day, talking about it, I had actually pulled from somebody else on YouTube in the way that they designed theirs. That doesn't really work for my channel since it's built it my way. We're gonna do things different, so. We're going to build a swing arm out of this L brackets. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld a, another L to make that square. And then I got these U-bolts right here that actually came off a club car rear end that are going to go just like this. Just like that. And they'll pull down tight on that and that'll hold it in place. I'll probably tack it right here just so it doesn't move. And then on that end... If you look, when I bounce on it, they pull backwards. So, all right, so this bushing right here comes out of the rear end of these things. Right back here has a little bushing inside here. All I'm going to do is take that out. Well, take it out. I have extras from jobs I've done. I'm going to cut it right here where this big part is. All the way around so it's just like a thick washer but it's rubber I'm gonna put that up underneath this so that it has a little bit of pivot to it so it'll rock back and forth on that thing and then the motor will be mounted somewhere in that area and then the transmission be mounted here I can scoot the motor over and I can eliminate that jack shaft issue which is perfect for me and then this will be built more to my liking and my custom build than anybody else. Plus, when the rear end moves up and down, the motor will move with it. So that eliminates tensioners and all that garbage I've done in the past. When I should have just been doing it this way instead of being lazy. As far as that goes, I'm going to grab another one of them, get it cut. Get me a hole drilled through that thing and a bolt mounted in the front. And then we're going to work on the back. Get some pieces welded on the back. Make that like a square instead of the L. We're going to go ahead and get our U-bolts bolted on that and be done with the back and the front. And then we're going to put the motor back on this plate and get it placed where we want it. And then we'll pick this video back up and I'll show you what I'm going to do with everything else. Alright, so just bringing everybody up to date. I got the front mounted. Welded a bar across it. Uh, put two bolts through. Here's the rubber shim I was talking about on both of them. On the rear end, I went ahead and welded another L to make it like a square tubing. On the back, put the two U-bolts with another piece of L just as a part to pull down on both sides. And I may cut this off. I was just eyeballing it for now. And as far as this goes, I've cut the frame to get the motor as far that way as possible. And I know I'm going to have to cut this right in here somewhere. Probably cut all this out. And the chain will be like right here. So I don't have the sprocket no more. Anyways, the chain will be about right here. And that will go to the transmission. Then on this side of the shaft, the chain will go up to the engine right in this area. Engine is set somewhere in here. I'm going to bolt this plate down now to the engine. Get it as far over and square it up as possible. And now I'm just going to tack that, tack this, remove the engine, then go ahead and weld this up to where it's good and solid. And I'm going to take my grinder and make these holes a little bit longer until I get everything tight. And then I'm going to weld this in place. These two brackets are both loose. And that should put everything in the motor mount to be solid. I can slide my motor up here. And my transmission will also be able to tension either direction. So with two ways of tensioning, I guess that word's right. This thing should be perfect. But yeah, that's the swing arm. It works pretty good. Get on the back, bounce. It all moves with the rear end now. So. Alright, so I got everything welded in, in place, motor mounts mounted. It's welded in pretty good. 
Ain't going to where I don't have the motor mounted yet, but I got the plates and everything. Swing arm's good. Got the transmission just sitting in place. I gotta make some spacers. So I just use these two little sprockets. I'm only using the 40. These two 35s, I just use them as a space to line it up with that front sprocket. It's actually pretty close. Kind of hard to tell from here. And then, of course, we got the bottom sprocket, which we still got to cut this housing off of here. Get that bottom sprocket in. But, as you can see, I mean, it shakes, but that's only because of the, the movement. But everything seems to be holding pretty good. I, I really like this idea. Because this is me bouncing on the back. And if you notice, there's no gap. No difference in the gap right there. So I don't have to worry about tensioners and all that. Basically what I'm going to do is put the chain on the back to that pulley or to that sprocket. Pull that tight. Weld those plates in the position. And that's it. That would be the tensioner for the back. Then of course the motor will slide so I can tension the chain from the front. Seems to be what I'm going to do at this point. Got all my wiring done. Everything else they wanted, they wanted these cigarette lighters in the dash and phone charger outlets and all that stuff. But that switch works the two outlets, that way it's an option. Then this switch will be for the light bar, which I have right here. It's a 32 inch light bar. Customer wanted it. It's gonna set, I already got the brackets mounted. So to sit right across the top of that club car emblem, I am going to polish these up. He just wanted me to clean them up a little bit. And then I took this off just so I could run wires. It makes it a lot easier to get to everything. Get all the wires ran up in here and we should be good to go after that. We'll be ready to fire it up and test drive it. This is where I'm going to end the video because I actually had to order a smaller sprocket for the back. And should be in thursday of this week so about two days three with the way my mail lady works so i'd order that and i'm still gonna have to build something for right here for a muffler i got that on there but i don't think that's gonna work if you look at the gap right there any movement in that seat and the thing's gonna be poking somewhere in the rear we'll figure it all out I might be able to lower it down a little bit. All I need is about another inch off of it. It'd be perfect. So we'll get that figured out. Um, I painted the pull rope blue. It's sitting right over there. I'll get it mounted back on once I get the motor where I want it. And yeah, we're going to put a gas tank over there on that side because the gas tank's too high. It'd be right in between the seats. And then we're going to put a battery box right here and put a battery in right here. That should end this project. I should be able to finish it next couple days. As soon as that sprocket comes in, we'll be able to test drive this thing. But I'm not going to weld nothing until I get that sprocket. But I can get everything in the perfect spot to weld it the first time. And hook the front chain up, get it tight. And we'll be ready to see what this thing will do. Judging by my math, it should be up around 18 to 20 miles an hour with this setup right here. This gearbox has a low low reduction for reverse so i mean reverse is going to be about five miles an hour it ain't gonna be much but forward it should get up and go i'm just hoping it'll pull he's only got a little sprayer so it should pull that with not much issues but we'll see we'll get it all put together and see what it'll do y'all stay tuned we'll pick up on part three and we'll get this thing running on part three do a little test drive 